Hello everyone. In continuation of the previous video, which you can find by clicking the pop-up link, I'd like to introduce you to this ready-made template. Thanks to this template, you won't need to spend time modeling stones, gem cutters or prongs. You can find it by following the link in the description. Additionally, you'll find my recommended mat caps for jewelry modeling there. In this video, I'll show you how to use this template. By selecting a group and clicking on gizmo, you'll see how I've positioned the center. The central point of the gizmo is the spot that moves along the surface when we use the transform function. If needed, you can adjust the gizmo by pressing pivot, moving it, and then disabling pivot. Gem cutters have layers which serve as settings that you can customize according to your needs. The presence of layers is indicated by a dot next to the cutter label. After configuring your gem cutters, you need to apply the layers accordingly. With this template, you'll receive a 1mm stone, a customizable gem cutter for this stone, and a 1mm prong. I'll open a model to demonstrate the workflow. Here's an element I'd like to work on. I'll add my template here. Inside the group, you'll find a stone and a gem cutter. I'll clone this group by clicking clone. I'll select one of the groups and use gizmo to move it up. Going into gizmo settings, I can specify any value in the scale section. For example, I want the stone to be two millimeters. Next, I'll select cutter and click on layers. Here I can adjust the gem cutter by moving the sliders as needed. Once the gem cutter is configured, I'll apply the layers by clicking this button. I'll change the material of the green part to have better control over the stone setting. When everything looks good, I'll use the gem cutter to create a setting for the stone in the metal using the boolean function. Next, I want to create a row of stones around the central stone. To do this, I'll take the second group and using transform, I'll first change the size in the scale section to 1.5. and place the stone on the model surface. I'll add a radial repeater to this group. By selecting cutter, I can customize it as needed. If everything is satisfactory, I'll apply the settings. I'll clone this radial repeater. In one, I'll keep the stones, and in the other, the gem cutters. We no longer need the groups. I'll create the holes.
All that's left is to configure and place the prongs using a similar method. In summary, I hope you now understand how to use this. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. I hope you found it helpful and inspiring. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel for more exciting tutorials and creative journeys. Stay tuned for more amazing content and until next time, happy sculpting!